kids. We was about to get shredded. I noticed there's no one around here, but hopefully that changes. All right, check it out. The perfect diet to get shredded. I want you to realize there might not be a perfect diet, but there will be a diet that'll work for you. Check it out. It all varies. I say this in every presentation I have because everybody's different. Now check it out. Some people have fast metabolism, some don't. You know those hard gainers, those easy gainers? Yo, who look at carbs and get fat, gain water? You know how it is, check it out. So, some people just operate better on carbs, some operate better on fats. Some can lose weight on a bunch of carbs, some don't, all right? So, you also have previous diets to look at. Uh, did you diet really long? Did you slow down your metabolism? Did you bring your calories up higher in the off season? And those are factors to consider. Cardio. How much cardio should you do? Should you do more cardio, eat less calories? What should be the goal? What should be what you do for your diet? Um, also, schedule, workload, family, stress level. Also, things to consider when putting together a program to get lean and shredded. So, here's the deal. We're going to start with protein. Protein is the most important thing. Protein is what we set first. 1 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight daily is what I like to set. Also, the person. Again, it all depends. Some people, people on certain supplements, so to speak, they might be able to enhance, synthesize more protein. Those are things to consider as well. And also, again, protein is the base of the diet. You set that first. Fats. Fats are essential. Fats your body needs for optimal hormonal operation. You need fats for an energy source, overall health, skin tone, all that good stuff. Fats are responsible for. And carbs, carbs are the variable. Carbs are easy energy. Glucose is your body's preferred source of energy. So we set those last. Basically, that's the variable we can play with to gain to, to gain muscle and lose fat. So as your fat loss stalls, carbs are the first thing we will go after. Um, it's the preferred energy source. It's tasty. Let's be honest here. Carbs are amazing. No one goes, man, I'm hungry. I really feel like a chicken breast now. No, people are like, man, I'm hungry. I want a Pop-Tart. I want a toaster strudel. I want a sweet potato. Whatever it is, you're gonna probably want carbs over protein as a tasty source. And micronutrients. Carbs such as sweet potatoes, oatmeal, vegetables, fruit, chock full of micronutrients. Micronutrients keep you healthy, make you help you metabolize your nutrients better, all good things. I like get a bulk of my food from bro foods. What are bro foods? Bro foods. You know what bro food is? Bodybuilders typically eat bro foods. Bro foods would be your chicken, your rice, your sweet potatoes, right? Now, I'm not against the other foods. Whole foods will have a higher micronutrient level. As we learn when we talk about carbohydrates, micronutrients are good for you. Also, bro foods are more satiating. They help you feel fuller. They have more fiber. They're more filling. They're more whole. They're less processed. So, there's no off-limit foods. I like to get 80% of foods from bro foods, and I like to get the rest of it, if you would like, from foods that maybe will stave off some cravings. But be careful. A lot of people can't stop at just one cookie. You know who you are. And for those of you, I recommend, a man likes cookies. I recommend finding a healthy relationship with food. And when you deprive yourself of food for some, it actually will do the opposite, where when you get that food, you'll binge. Other people, when you introduce that yummy food, they have no choice but to completely go completely insane and eat every damn cookie in sight. That's why for some people, it's better not to introduce. Like, you know, it might be hyperbole, but think about when you're an alcoholic. Do you just like take a little sip of alcohol? No. If you have an unhealthy relationship with food, cookie becomes your alcohol. Where well, you gotta pick up that, you know, two month chip and put down the cookie and stay away from those trigger foods. But for some people who can handle it, it's okay to indulge as long as it fits in your macronutrients. So let's go over the main variables. I want to open this up to Q&A and make this about you. Okay? Calories and versus calories out first and foremost. Key is you want to burn more calories than you take in. That's number one. However, we want to control it. I like to recommend one to two pounds of weight loss per week. That's kind of the sweet spot. Any more than that, 
you know, you might be losing some muscle and you might feel like crap. Glycemic index in the 80s. How many of you guys are old enough to remember the 80s? Ronald Reagan. Really, really bad hair. Cindy Lauper. And the glycemic index. All equally stupid. However, what we found is that the glycemic index studies were done on people who just ate a bolus, which means a shitload of carbohydrate. They eat nothing else with it. So assuming you're not just eating sugar as a meal, the glycemic index is completely irrelevant and dare I say stupid. That's the word of the day, by the way, stupid. I think we're gonna go with that. So, meal timing. Now, bodybuilders are notorious for, bro, I gotta meet my meals, bro. Bro, I can't have sex right now, I have a meal. Whoa, bro, I'm sorry, sis. Oh, sis, I'm from the South, it's all right. Incest is all good where I'm from. So, so the three to six meals a day thing I recommend is for comfort. You know, three meals, you know what, if calories are lower, they're gonna be satiating. I like six, because I get to eat more calories. But for most people, three to six, even three to four is kind of the sweet spot. That whole, oh, I eat six meals. I love when people come up to me. Well, I'm eating six times a day. It's like, what the hell are you eating six times a day? I have no idea. So, um, I, I like three to six meals. That's kind of the zone I set. Um, adequate protein is key. Again, the gram to gram and a half per pound of body weight. Just as best people it was out mean body weight, overall body weight. I'm not smart enough to break it down. So we're just gonna go with pound. So if you weigh 300 pounds, that's 300 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein. And adjust calories and stick points are hit. When you don't lose fat, when you don't lose weight, when you don't lose your one to two pounds a week, I like to decrease calories coming first from carbohydrate. About 240 calories to most, that's about 60 grams of carbs. Now if you're a female or if you're on less calories, obviously, won't adjust it as much. Cardio. What's cardio? It's an easy way to burn calories. So instead of cutting calories, cardio creates that deficit, which allows you to keep burning fat. And normally, don't go over 45 minutes a day of medium intensity. We go into high intensity cardio, all that, that's another 15 minute um, friggin' presentation. So, but, cardio. Actually, I do go over cardio. My bad. Different slide. Okay, check it out. Um, cardio burns extra calories. We've already gone over that before. HIT versus MISS and LISS. Let me explain. HIT is high intensity interval training. I go over the whole VO2 max and all that scientific BS. Here's the bottom line. HIT cardio, you run really freaking fast and then you run really slow. Really fast and then you recover. Really fast and you recover. It's like a night with me in bed. It's just, it's, it's topsy-turvy. The refractory period is all over the place. That's HIT cardio. Medium intensity is when you can carry on a conversation, get your somewhat out of breath. Low intensity is like what you see most bodybuilders who are way too damn much for their height, like me, doing, where they're really walking slow because they can't really move much faster. Um, hit cardio is the best because in 20 minutes, you can do what you can do in an hour. Steve, I believe you wrote a book uh, about hit a while ago. So he's a big fan of hit. In fact, we did hit on a really high staircase once. Red Rock in Colorado, I almost died. But not as much as I almost died earlier eating a pound of protein. In fact, I will be in the bathroom after this presentation. Um, bottom line is they all have their place. I don't like to see hit done more than three times a week just because of the recovery needed from hit. Medium intensity is my preferred. I never recommend low intensity, dude. That's like going to the supermarket. Do you really count that as cardio? Do you go to Walmart like, dude, I just burned calories, bro. No. You go to Walmart, you deal with the funny looking people like everybody else. But it's not cardio. So I like medium intensity and high intensity. And as stick points are hit, hit that real stick point, that's when hit comes into play. Because hit also, keep in mind, burns calories for 39 hours after you do it. Medium intensity, about three to four. Which would you rather have? The one that keeps burning calories. You can sit around watching the Golden Girls and burn a ton of calories. Health. Cardio keeps you from dying. It's good for your heart. It's good for your circulation. It's just good stuff, so cardio should be kept in. And uh, too much cardio. Um, women are notorious for this. They just go on that damn step. I don't know how y'all do it. You go on the step mill for like four hours. After about 10 minutes, I'm about to die. So 
there is such thing as too much cardio. I think if you have too much, if you're in deep contest prep, I can see where two hours a day comes in sometimes. However, for most people just trying to get in shape, for hit, you're looking at 20 to 30 minutes. If you're to do MISS every day, I don't see any reason to go for 45 usually. And when to increase? That's a good question. To keep your calories from going too low, I like to use cardio as a variable to increase the deficit. And that depends on the individual and what their caloric burn and their caloric needs are. Training, a lot of people back in the day, back in the 80s, remember how bad the 80s were? They also sucked for training. You'd read like Flex Magazine. I'm not old enough to work. I worked there in the 90s and the 2000s. Um, I remember they're like, bro, I'm getting ready for a show. I'm doing them high reps. Y'all know that. You've read that before, right? Okay, that's bullshit. When you're dieting, you actually want to use lower reps to stimulate your muscle and prevent muscle loss. So, training, my theory is, train when you cut like you trained when you, when you got big. It's all the same. Stimulate and overload your muscle. High reps, again, they do not cause fat, rep, uh, fat loss over low reps. Lift heavy. Up to a point, I'm not saying like blow out your shoulder or anything, to elicit that overload of the muscle and a reason. Um, I put sissy in there, but I actually meant the other word that ends in SSY. Don't lift like a sissy. Just get at it, man. Lift some damn weight. Conclusion. John's not here right now. He has an eye infection. So I'm going to actually wax poetic myself. The bottom line with dieting is adjusting. You can download a diet from any idiot diet guru like me online, and it's not going to, it might get your results at first. The key is adjusting your diet as you go along to keep reaching your goals as stick points are hit. That's where hiring a coach or something like that might come in handy unless you can handle it yourself. And with that said, I'd like to open this up to you asking me whatever the hell you want to ask me about anything, including what kind of underwear I'm wearing or if I'm wearing any at all. So, anybody, I know y'all have a question. Anything. Just raise your hand. Throw them in the air, wave them like just don't care. Was that your hand? No. Anybody? <laughs> Am I wearing underwear? You'll find out later. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Fat loss, would you prefer, or would you ever have a time where you go moderate versus high intensity? What I like to do as a diet guy, as a so-called guru, I like to start out with medium intensity cardio. And once I'm at two out where you're doing 45 minutes seven times a week, that's every day. That's post workout anytime. That's another thing. Timing of cardio, empty stomach in the morning, it's all crap. Just do your damn cardio. I don't care if you do it after eating. I don't care if you eat a chicken breast while doing it. Just get on the damn treadmill, step down, do your damn cardio. What I like to do is once stick points are hit, I like to replace the, the MISS session with it. So I'll replace that. So let's say you're doing seven days, I'll make it six days of medium intensity, then hit for the other day. And that's what I found to work, but again, it depends on the individual. Some individuals, like my brother, who uh, turned pro last year, this year, I didn't have him touch it because he trains like a moron. And if I was to do hit, his body would fall apart. So it just depends. But that's usually what I do for most people. Any other questions? That was a great question, man. Thank you. I was dying up here. Any other questions? There's all these people here. No question about diet. Anything. Anything. Any questions about anything? Yes? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Carb source is my favorite question. I prefer cheesecake. No, no, here's the thing. Sweet potato every day is your carb source is fine, but that sucks. I mean, that's why I say 80% bro carbs. At the end of the day, when it comes to fat loss, it doesn't matter. You get all your carbs from sugar, really. When it comes to fat loss, it doesn't matter. The reason sweet potatoes are freaking awesome, they're chock full of micronutrients. They're nice. They have that dark hue. And if you put Splenda on it, it's better than sex. Well, it depends who you're having sex with. But it's, it's, it's a close second, bro. Close second. So the thing is, is that, yeah, sweet potatoes are fine, but why limit yourself to sweet potatoes? There's oatmeal. Hell, there's, carb sensitive. you're carb sensitive. 
My nipples are sensitive. <laughs> Coincidence. No, he's carb sensitive. Well, it's still a carb. If your carbs are the same, it's not going to make a difference. It really won't. Unless you're just eating that sweet potato as your only source of food without protein and fat. So I don't think it's going to make a difference. You might think it does, but in the grand scheme, it, it, there's no difference. Just like that whole bodybuilding thing. I eat fish, it thins my skin. I don't even know what the hell that means. And I don't know who came up with that. I want to know what abstract they read to come up with that one. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. What's your feeling on intermittent fasting for getting shredded? Shit. <sighs> intermittent fasting. Okay, who here doesn't know what intermittent fasting is? Okay. Basically, um, another bro, guru, whatever, came up with a thing where you, there's data that if you're starving, that your GH levels go up. First of all, that's another topic. Endogenous GH is BS. It doesn't prove crap. But here's another thing. There's, there's, basically what you do is you have a fasting period, and then you have what's a feeding period. So essentially, the, the most popular window is 18 hours of fasting and six hours of eating. Now, will it work? Yes. At the end of the day, macronutrients in versus macronutrients out. I don't think it's optimal because there are optimal protein synthesis levels at times. And I'd love to see, even though these people are losing weight, as David Sandler said to me, I'd love to see their lean mass loss during this time period. My main issue with intermittent fasting is I believe, and I'm going to get lambasted if anybody posts this on YouTube, I believe that it promotes eating disorders because you're starving and then binging. And also another issue, if you're like me, or um, who here has a fast metabolism? Okay, if you're like my man over there. Okay, how many calories do you eat today, my man? I'm supposed to have around 3,400. Okay, he has 34,000 calories a day. 3,400. Okay, 28,000. Okay, check it out. Imagine if he was to fit all 34,000 cal 3,400 calories <laughs> in a six hour window. That'd be like what I did with that protein right there. I gotta poop. I mean, so the bottom line is, you're gonna be sitting there trying to cram it in, and then you're gonna starve yourself for 18 hours. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not an expert, but I've dealt with a lot of people with eating disorders, and I just don't see the physiological benefit, even if it works better, to outweigh the risk that I see inherently exists in starving and then binging. I'm sorry, I said it, I said it. Yes. When you're starting to cut, how much should you start with without like totally drastically cutting like a thousand calories a day? You know, like should you go increment wise? Very good question. The, the question is, when you start to cut, how do you set your calories correct? Um, the thing is, do you really have your calories where you set? Okay. Um, trial and error. What I do is you usually set like, let's say you guess, and you find out where you maintain. Or let's say you're eating. Have you ever, okay, let's assume you're eating this whatever you want to eat, and you're staying the same. You don't change anything, you weigh your food for a week, and you figure out your protein, carbon, and fat. That's your maintenance. You adjust your macros, so you're getting the one gram per pound, you're getting about 0.5 grams per pound of fat, and then you're filling in the rest of carbs. You start there, and then you lower it, depending on how high. I like to go by the 30-60 rule. If your calories are lower, start with decreasing it by 30 grams of carbs. And then, if they're higher, decrease it by 60, which is about 240 calories. What that'll do, and then you want to look and see if you're losing one to two pounds a week. If you're losing too much, bump it up. If you're losing not enough, bump it down. You're gonna see a lot of macronutrient calorie counters online. I think they're stupid. I actually did a macronutrient counter the other day, and it was about, I think it was 3,400 calories underneath what I eat. I'd lose 18 pounds a day. I'm just playing, that's hyperbole as well. For those of you who don't know what hyperbole, I'm just kidding. So that's that's why I don't like macronutrient ratio counters. I believe in trial and error. Yes, sir. So with my low, like high metabolism, I stay at around 6% like year round. I want to cut for like a show. How do I do that while still maintaining my size as far as like saving? The question is, my man who eats 36,000 calories a day, 
He wants to know he's already lean. He stays at 6%. He's got shredded glutes here round. He's got a shredded bladder. He's got that V going right here, right? You know what I'm saying, does he? Awesome. All right, check it out. So he's got the shredded V. It's pointing, it's pointing right there, right? So check it out. Same as everybody else. <laughs> did, like, did a guy just say that? Was that you, Sean? Uh, it might have been. Sean, yeah, I think you just came out of the closet. Congratulations, everybody. Go, Sean. Thank, you. Thank you, Sean. Yes, he's my type, so I'm good. Okay. He's rich. That's my type. <laughs> what the hell are we talking about? Okay, how does an already lean person cut? Same way as everyone else. Aim to lose. For a lean guy who's already lean, if you give yourself time, I like long diets. You know what? Lose about 0.5 to one and a half pounds a week. And just pay attention and not go over that. Because if you're like me, if I drop my calories, boom, man, I'm gonna just shrivel up. I'm gonna be like uh, your manhood in a cold swimming pool. It's not gonna be good. Nah, I'm sure he's okay. He's got the V. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, so basically just take it slow. And um, that's the key. But when you're dieting and you think you're getting small, that means it's working. You know, I always go to people who are head judging shows and go, how you feeling? I was at Sean's show the other week in Orange County. I said, how you feeling today? And if they say they're feeling good, I say you didn't diet hard enough. Yes, I saw some hands over here. Yes, sir. All right. So the question is, do maintenance calories change on a daily basis? The answer is they change on an hourly basis, on a minutely basis. Imagine if you went to the grocery store, Walmart again, seeing all the freaks, right? You think there's freaks here? Go to Walmart. There's some freaky ass people at Walmart, right? So you go to Walmart and you walk. Your maintenance calories just went up, right? You just burn more calories. The key is you want a consistent level. I like to have three days. I like to have a non-training day, I like to have a training day, and I like to have what I call a refeed day. What a refeed day is, is when you bump up calories, one, to keep you sane, and two, to, to make sure your body doesn't get caught in that rut of being at the same calorie level. You can also do something called a free meal, or a cheat meal. I don't like to use the word cheat. It's like food infidelity. You know, um, so I like to use a free meal to basically kickstart your thing, just keep you sane too. I mean, if you have a family, you're, if you're dieting, getting ready for a show, how many people are married? Anybody here married? Okay, you're off, sorry. Um, you know, if you're getting ready for a show, she'd be like, we never go out. You never take me out, blah, blah, blah. And you all her friends, right? You know, her friends, like their husbands, they can't even see, you know, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, well, I gotta get my thing done. That gives you a chance weekly to be somewhat normal and just go to Applebee's and get their crappy ribs. Does that answer that question? Okay, his question I'll get to quickly because that was the seminar earlier. I missed it, sorry. No, you, you can't be missing the seminar. <laughs> Fast tablets are put on weight, basically exactly what I said here, but adding calories. Aim for 0.5 to one pound gain per week, Add carbohydrates instead of taking them away. It's pretty simple. Well, that was this whole seminar is about how to get lean. Okay, you just came here. Does anybody have it on film? You can play it back. You do. I'll just have a private session with him. What's up? I'll just give him a private session. Okay, David Sandler, but you have to buy at least 12 jugs of BioGro to get the private session. Yeah. Dave does other private sessions, in case you're interested. <laughs> Three numbers and letters. Okay, anything else? Is that Van holding up his hand? Okay, what's the question, Van? Oh, wait, here goes. Okay, he's too tired to troll on me. Yes, sir. Like, uh, no, uh, like, if you, do you think you could get more gains if you have like a lifting log instead of just like going to the gym and just trying to? Yeah, his question is, well, you get more gains if you have a lifting log if you track your workouts. I think everybody 
should track their workouts if they're in that beginner to intermediate stage. I don't track my workouts because I just don't care enough to do it anymore. I'm a hypocrite, but I recommend everybody track your weight so you can see the linear progression and see if you're making gains and add weight and increase overload every workout. I do recommend a training log, but if you're watching my videos like, Mark, do you write it down? No, I don't write anything down. I'm a hypocrite. It is what it is. All right, any other questions? Hands. Throw your hands there. Might make just some care. All right, we're good. I'm Mark Lowland, and with Isatori, be sure to go over and try those Eat Smart bars. TigerFitness.com. It's not a game. Yeah.